Hello everyone. Thanks for joining today's session. And today's session is about end-to-end -end observability of 5G control plan for connected vehicle service using open telemetry. Unfortunately, Mr. Ito from Toyota is unable to join us due to some reasons. So today I will be presenting alone. Uh, so <laughs> a little nervous. So about me, my name is Kota Endo from KDA Corporation. I am enabling our operation support system to take advantage of all aspects of the platform. My main focus is uh, my main focus is ensure that the service levels provided by the 5G network services are always achieved. And it is to manage the life cycle of the service efficiently. The combination of service life cycle management and open telemetry is very interesting to us because we believe that we can monitor the behavior of each service in a distributed system and collect data to optimize it. Okay. Toyota and KDDI are conducting a proof of concept to monitor the end to end connected vehicle service. Our presentation today will be about this initiative. First of all, let me give you an overview of this presentation. Observability is just as critical in connected vehicle service and mobile network operations as in any other. For example, monitoring performance, user experience, security, resource utilization, and so on. We always want to know if our clients are using our services without problems in a low cost and efficient way. The open telemetry provides a way to do just that. So we instrument 5G system used by connected vehicle service with open telemetry. And this leads to important results. Firstly, prompts root cause analysis from correlation of trust metrics and logs. Secondly, calculation of the number of subscribers affected by failure using 5G SUPI. And lastly, reduction in the amount of computation required to create a transaction log. Okay. So let me introduce the concept of connected vehicle service. In the automotive and transportation industry, we have a framework known as CHAOS, which stands for Connected, Autonomous, Shared, and Electric. This framework outlines the key trends that are shaping the future of vehicles and mobility solutions. Now, when it comes to data types, we have some important laws like CAN, camera, and geolocation. They provide valuable insights and are the basis for technologies such as autonomous vehicles and real-time mapping. In different situations, we need specific data processing approaches. Some scenarios call for real-time responses, while other benefits from the efficiency of batch processing. Now, moving on to the topic of hybrid cloud architecture. It offers the flexibility to fine-tune factors like cost, performance, security, and compliance by making the most of different development models with a single integrated system. Lastly, we have the use of a cellular network for vehicle communication, which comes with several advantages. It offers extensive coverage, reliability, and the ability to transmit data in real time or near real time. This type of communication is brighter for various applications such as vehicle tracking, remote diagnostic, emergency services, and enhancing the overall driving experience. It also forms the foundation for connected car and Internet of Things technologies with the automotive industry. Now, I will explain the requirements from two important perspectives in this scenario the mobile network operator side and the connected vehicle service side. 
From the standpoint of the mobile network operator, there are several key needs. First and foremost, they require systems that can handle many users who are continuously connected. This is essential to provide a seamless and an interrupted experience for all customers. In addition, these systems must be designed to support IoT devices, particularly connected cars. As such, they need to exhibit a high level of reliability and be able to accommodate a wide range of connected devices and applications. Furthermore, accountability is a critical factor for the mobile network operator. We need to be prepared to assess the impact of system failures and understand how these failures affect customers. This commitment to accountability is essential for quickly issue resolution and maintaining a high level of cybersecurity. Now, on the connected vehicle service side, there are different set of requirements. Firstly, it's imperative to identify the specific areas where vehicle communication may be affected. By doing so, we can proactively address potential trouble spots and minimize disruptions. It's also crucial to understand which vehicles might be impacted by these issues. This knowledge allows for more targeted responses and supports, ensuring that affected vehicles are promptly attended to. Defining the nature of the communication troubles is vital. This means specifying the exact nature of the issues, whether they pertain to the transmission, connectivity, or any other aspects of communication. And lastly, it's important to establish a clear timeline for when these services are expected to be resolved. This not only helps manage customer expectations, but also aids in planning for contingencies and ensure timely resolution of any issues that may arise. When the service level of application degraded, it was difficult to distinguish whether the degradation was caused by the application domain or the network domain. It was difficult to quick recovery from the failure and understand the impacts, and there was a need to reduce the time required to synthesize monitoring data when viewing transactions in end to end. We also wanted to reduce the amount of time spent managing monitoring data when looking at transactions in end to end. This presentation will address these issues from the perspective of a 5G network deployed in a cloud native environment. This section describes mobile network based on 3GPP specifications. The third generation partnership project is an umbrella term for a number of standards organizations which develop protocols for mobile communications. The RAN is part of the radio network. The core is responsible for network control, data routing, authentication, security, and service provision. Mobile network consists of three main components, the radio access network, transport network, and core network. These elements work together to ensure the seamless operation of our devices and services. In the context of, context of the 5G technology, an important innovation is the adoption of control and user plan separation. This means that the control function and user data functions are separated, allowing for more efficient and flexible network management. Within the 5G core network, the control plan relies on various protocols. Some of these include widely used protocols like HTTP, as well as 3GPP-defined protocols, such as NGARP and PFCP. These protocols play a critical role in ensuring the proper functioning of the 5G network. Facilitating communication between various network components and delivering high-quality services to users. In 5G, each C plan process, control plan process, is defined as a procedure, such as registration, session establishment, 
handover, and so on. However, it's difficult to track the processing of a procedure because it is performed by multiple components. For example, these figures show part of the registration procedure. Services are provided by the coordination of each network function. In addition, there is no mechanism yet to monitor a series of procedures in end-to-end -end in real time, making it difficult to discover where the problem occurred. Well, we introduced the open source pre-5GC and UELAN SIM, which we use to simulate a 5G environment. Free 5 gc is open source 5G core network software that follows the 3GPP release 15 specifications for the 5G core network. It's equipped to handle network tracing, quality of service, and various security features. And the UELAN SIM is open source 5G LAN simulator that aligns with 3GPP release 15 and 60 specifications. Is UELAN SIM Users can simulate various run scenarios, such as registration and handover, using multiple user equipment. Leveraging cloud native network functions allows us to effectively deploy slicing and match access edge computing in both virtual radio access network and the 5G core. This approach provides us with a versatile and highly efficient network infrastructure to support these important features. The React Foundation 5G Supergroup Print is all about fostering collaboration and the development of comprehensive end-to-end -end 5G solutions. Within this framework, cloud network functions play an important role. They are instruments in Neighboring automation and closed loop process that are integral to the success of 5G networks. This collaboration and technology implementation are key to driving the advancement of 5G solutions. The 5G blueprint also needs to manage the life cycle of 5G slicing, which is where tracing is also focused. So I will now explain the architecture of the 5G system on OpenStack that we use in the demonstration. In reality, the scale is much larger. Uh, instrumentation with open telemetry has been applied to each network function, enabling the getting of the data. And we use great products such as Grafana, Prometheus, Loki, Tempo, and so on. Of course, the open telemetry collector is also used as a sidecar for each network function pool. So uh, each user equipment is set up so that two slices can be used. One is latency sensitive and the other is bandwidth sensitive. Each slice is where our different applications with custom QoS requirements to be supported on the same physical infrastructure. The connected car communication communicate with the center application using different sources and the connected services provided. To trust the control plan procedure of 5G system end to end, we need to propagate the trust context from one network function to another. Regarding HTTP, it can be propagated using the method defined in the W3C trust context using trust parent. On the other hand, when it comes to 3GP defined protocols like NGAP and PFCP, they don't offer fields that can be easily extended like HTTP. NGAP and PFCP are protocols defined as a set of messages as shown in the figure on the left. Also, each message is defined as a set of information elements as shown in the figure on the right. To propagate trust context, it was necessary to extend NGAP and PFCP messages and define our trust context as new information elements. Network operator allocated to its SIM card a unique identifier, 
No up to the 4G as an MZ, and for the 5G as a SUPI. Currently, 5G security specifications do not allow plain text transmission of the SUPI over the radio access between UE and AMF. SUSHI is a private preserving identifier containing the can uh, concealed SUPI. The UE generates a SUSHI by encrypting, encrypting SUPI with the public key of the home network. And Gucci is a core network temporary identifier and allocated by MF to the UE. We use SUPI for uniquely identifying user equipment because SUSHI and Gucci are not suitable for tying to subscribers. The place to embed SUPI into Spam attributes is MF or UDM, which SUPI can handle. By instrumenting the 5G system with open telemetry, we are able to trace the execution of each procedure. This is an example of registration procedure. Traces allow us to track and monitor the processing of complicated procedures. This figure shows the trace of an error in the registration procedure. And this error indicates that there is a problem with the registration of subscriber information for certain UE and the authentication process has failed. This is an example of mobile network troubleshooting. In the mobile service, we provide service levels such as communication speeds and the ability to connect to connect at any time are very important to us. So when service levels are degraded, the cause should be investigated and resolved immediately. Specifically, we include the trace ID in the logs and metrics, jumps the trace from the metric that is taking the longest time to process. Look at the logs from there. And then look at the server resource status of the pod or VM virtual machine where the logs are being output, and so on. For example, when an error occurred in the subscriber database, we jump from the address of the said error to the specific log to see the error detail. Detailed analysis with log from address. In addition, SUPI is embedded in the trust. So the number of terminals that have failed in a particular procedure can be determined. For example, uh, the number of failed procedure in the registration procedure is checked, and uh, from there, SUPI is used to narrow down the list. In the demonstration, the email is identified from the SUPI and further linked from there to vehicle ID. SUPI is a subscriber identifier and the email is a device identifier. Correlates vehicle status and application transaction status from vehicle ID. This leads to identifying whether the program is in the network domain or the application domain. The mobile network output the processing of a single transaction as a call summary log. A call summary log is generated each time the user equipment disconnect and sent to the backend data lake. Timing of this connection includes power off and hand over timing. The call summary logs are separated at each network functions and they are merged at the back end in batch processing every few minutes. This is taking too long. By including the required information as an attribute in the sperm, complete end-to-end -end logs can be obtained in the real time compared to the current methods using core summary log. We also examined what happens to open telemetries CPU and memory overheads by loading AMF. 
MF is the most low-level network function in the processing of control plane in the core network. The MF pod is allocated for CPUs and it of memory in this scenario. An open telemetry collector are deployed as a sidecar with no processors. The, it makes the registration fail multiple times from multiple user equipment. The results shown that while CPU utilization was affected to some extent, memory utilization was almost unaffected by the instrumentation. Sampling is being tried to further reduce CPU utilization uh, in our team. Uh, finally, I talk about the next steps when it comes to uh, harmonizing with 3ZPP. It's important to note that the standardized trace context propagation using NVAP and PSCP is not part of their framework. This lack of standardization makes it challenging to deploy this functionality in production mobile networks. However, our presentation's implementation holds potential to influence standardization. Within 3ZPP, there has been a proposal to adapt HTTP over um, L2 interface. And our use case will play a cruci crucial role in prompting the standardization of LAN and core convergence. It serves as a prime example for future developments in this field. Our total motor will be showcasing their 5G U plant projects, which is related to this presentation at the Open Source Summit Japan on December 6, 2023. You can find more information on the event at this link. In closing my presentation, I would like to go over the key points. We instrument 5G system used by connected vehicle service with open telemetry. And this leads to important results. First, we prompt RCA from correlation of traces, metrics, and logs. Secondary, Calculation of number of subscribers affected by failure using 5 gcp And lastly, election and the amount of computation required to create a transaction log. Next step will harmonize with organizations such as 3 gpp using the CNCF projects and create applications and network domain and incorporating open geometry and software for life uh, Thrice life cycle management, such as ONAP, which is open source. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for joining my talk. <laughs> Do you have any question? Well, I'll be around. Yeah, if you have any question, just you can join me. Sorry? Uh, you mean a firewall database? How much data do you pass through, like, uh, like I mean, a number? What kind of data throughput are you dealing with uh, in, in, your, in your case? As, as, as uh, all three, uh, uh, so. So, sorry, one, one more, please. So, so this is my yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was, I was thinking that I'm sitting close enough. What, what kind of data, telemetry data throughput are you dealing with? How much data does it consume, uh, this whole pipeline built with open telemetry? Could, it, could it maybe give us some numbers, some idea of? Uh, you, you may output open telemetry tracing data. Uh, sorry, honestly, uh, I, I don't speak English very well, so I will uh, ask you a question, sorry. Sorry. Uh,
Thank you.